finds a reservation card because Light figured out this tea place you can make reservations. Under the fiance's name. Under the FBI guy's fiance's name. So he goes to that table and he finds a black bag. And when he gets the bag, we then get a flashback to Light ripping out a page of the death note and we're going, what? No! But Light goes, no, because even if it's not in the death note, it still has its power and I'm going to use this to give everything. And Rook makes a fun comment of, you have your Kita face. You have your Kita face. And it is a very dark expression on Light's face. I give kudos to the actor because he's doing a very good job with the role, which I can admit is probably one of the hardest roles you can really ask for when there are so many iconic versions, mostly the anime, with that character and anything really different is going to be put off by fans, but he's doing a really good job with it. And kind of explains his plan, not entirely to Rupert, it was like, there, I'll put it in here, and then he writes the explanation that leaves the name blank. And, of course, those of you who know the series, uh, you hear the transmission from Light to the FBI guy via walkie-talkies that he altered. And you actually see him altering the walkie-talkie, which is kind of fun. And while we see him, when we saw him altering the walkie-talkies, we got a quick flashback to when his mother was alive. And you saw back then he wanted to be a cop. But he doesn't now, so it's it's never stated. But it, I think it is heavily implied, but it is heavily implied that it was the death of his mother that kind of made Light not want to go into law enforcement at all. He just, and kind of made him just want to relax and enjoy life, or just kind of go through the motions without making waves. And you get a sense that was, that he was very different as a young, as a young kid. I hope they do more of these flashbacks actually, because I like that. It also very much highlights the schism between him and his dad now. Alright, back to what's happening at the cafe and the FBI guy. And Light threatens to kill his fiance. He goes, I know your fiance's name. I know her face. You will do as I say or she will die. And that was my dog. She decided to kick the table. No idea why. You'll, again, you'll see her later. Silly puppy. She may be silly puppy, but she's my puppy. Anywho, back to the episode. So we see Kira. Our main Kira, aka Light. He's saying this as Kira. You got follow my instructions precisely, and he gives them the instructions of writing all the FBI names and then put yours in the red space. And he's like, Why should I put mine in the red space? What's so special about it? He's like, Do you want your fiance to live or not? And it does, and it turns out that that space says after he does that, he's going to bag all the stuff he used to write it and go to a construction yard, an abandoned construction yard, and then have a heart attack there. And so during we see the FBI get up and leave, we then cut to L's headquarters, and we see all these FBI guys dropping dead from heart attacks. And he's like, oh crud, oh crud. But he knows which one got contacted. And we do see the guy's real name. It was, I think, David Miller or something. Dave, it's David, first name, last name started with an M. I can't remember what his last name was. But, you know, we just get a, we don't really get a montage like we do with the movie. We just see a computer with red on those who are dead. And they have a tracker on all the FBI guys, so they are s sending Light's dad to find what happened to David, the FBI guy. And Light is at the abandoned construction thing to get the bag, but it turns out he's not dead! The FBI guy's not dead! He wrote a fake name! And he read what's going on, he's like, so is this how you're doing it? Is this how you're doing it? I am going to kill you to protect my fiance. 
I'm doing this to protect my family, and the whole time you can just see Light has the paper behind him in a pen. He's like, I don't know his name, well, you know his name. Which is actually fairly ironic because before, earlier, there was a short little bit of Rook once again playing the little devil, trying to get Light to take the eyes of the Shimagami so he could have half his life. I really want to see what they're going to do with Rook in later episodes because right now he's being the shoulder devil and those of you who've read the manga, you know what he does in the manga. I'm kind of hoping he does this in the live action series because they've never done that in any other adoration but the manga, but this Rook seems like the evil jerk who'd do it. I'm not going to spoil it for those of you who haven't read the manga. Go buy the manga and read it. So we have uh, Light at gunpoint, the gun is pointed right at his head by the FBI guy, and all of a sudden the FBI guy falls over from a heart attack. And you don't know why, he's like, what the, what the hell just happened? But here's the police siren, so he grabs all his stuff, if the, any evidence against him, and gets the hell out of Dodge. And when the police show up, we see the pop star, aka Second Kita, coming out with her death note in hand. There was actually an earlier scene with her having the concert and looking at light and kind of freezing for a moment. And you're not really sure why, but then they show her backstage going, Does this look like Light Iga? I can never pronounce Light's last name, but in the backstage, they're like, Yeah. So it's kind of there to establish that she has the eyes of the Shinigami. And so, the, I'll get back to the bit with her later. But Light just kind of goes, I've lost. You know, well, no, not Light, sorry, L, L. I know I've done that in the past few longs, and I apologize. But L's just kind of like, I've lost this battle. Oh, no. And he, you see. L get legitimately angry and kind of depressed, which I would never in a million years have guessed that this L was capable of experiencing these things called emotions that the humans feel. Because the other iterations of L have been very one note, but so darn eccentric, you don't care. So it is nice to see more dimensions to L. Although I still kind of have my issues with him again. He still wears shoes. L should not wear shoes. I am going to be angry about that until the day I die. And puppy's getting up. Puppy. All right, but once light. Like, Puppy's shaking. Lucky way. Bye, puppy! I would show her on during this vlog if she- if I could get her to be willing to be on camera. She doesn't really like it that much. But... So I apologize for any background noises. But later it kind of goes to a more evening scene and Light's like, Rude, did you save me? And Rook's like, no. I mentioned this before, didn't I? I'm not on your side. I'm not on theirs either. I just want to see how this plays out, because this is actually kind of hilariously entertaining. And so I like, so who saved my ass? And then it goes, there's a second Kira. And they'll show up with their Shinigami soon. And it's like, wait, what? There's another person with Shinigami. He's like, yeah. And then he flies away and refuses to answer any more of Light's questions. Which then leads us to the final scene of the episode, which is uh, the pop star, now fully sucking Kira, talking to Rem, and Rem's like, so you finally used the eyes of the Shinigami and the death note to kill someone. So it turns out that FBI guy was her first kill. And, she's, and, she, and Rem's like, so why'd you save that guy anyway? It was kind of pointless. I mean, Rem, you can tell, is going to be a very different Shinigami from Rook, which 
you know, just by her voice, Rem's voice, which is female, so I'm going to call Rem a her. And just very demure and not really moving as much. Whereas Nook's very animated and anytime he talks, he's moving his hands or his legs are floating and just kind of being the most distracting thing on screen. Rem is very... I do not think we really see Rem move. Except for Rem's mouth while talking to Sankita. And uh, the pop star turns him and goes, I saw that he didn't have a life counter at the concert, so that's how I knew he was Kira. And Kira avenged my family, so I decided I owed him. And I'm curious on what's going to happen next, because at some point, Light and the pop star are going to crisscross, and oh my goodness, you already get a sense that the pop star is unhinged because she feels no remorse at all for what she did. She killed a person she doesn't seem to feel anything about. She's like, it was Kira, so I will help Kira. I don't care who. You just get a sense that she doesn't give two flips over who she's going to kill. They're just going to die if they get in her way. They don't outright come and say it, but it's really, it's kind of implied heavily. And frankly, I can't wait. I really can't to see. Because she is a very cal. She does seem very cold and callous in those last scenes. And when that happens, I'm really excited to see what they do with her. But that was episode three. We got teasers at the end of Light and L meeting face to face. Because as those of us who know the series know that Elle eventually finds excuse to tail or hang out with Light physically, knowing he's safe. And then we have Puppy. Sorry, she she was being adorably cute and is demanding I pet her. So petty pet puppy. I am. Uh, forgive me. She's being very. Silly right now, trying to keep her away from the tripod. <laughs> she keeps wanting to sniff the tripod. She has knocked it over a few times. Don't get it. Ah! See what I tell you? She doesn't like the tripod. <laughs> Sorry, doggy hit tripod. And, but that, they, I'm looking forward to that next episode. I guess I'll see you next time. Sayonara, and oh, by the way. I have not done this in the other patron, in the other vlogs, and I really should have. Uh, please, if you like these vlogs and want to continue doing them, please support me on Patreon. Link below. Uh, there are some fun rewards up right now. There's deleted scenes. There's also a video I took in between shooting episodes 5 and hanging around Disney World. So please support because I am putting out a I'm been putting out a lot of videos until the series is over, and I just want to make sure that everything works out. And yes, if you guys are hearing the lapping, it's the dog drinking water. But please support the show. Can't do it without ya. And I'll see you for the next Death Note vlogs.